Great. So welcome, YouTube broader public, to tonight's Ujima Wednesdays. We are, well, it's Land and Real Estate Month, so we are joined by Deborah and Henry from the Boston Impact Initiative for a very exciting experiential workshop playing the integrated capital card game, which they will explain in more detail very soon. But the Boston Impact Initiative, BII, invests in enterprises throughout Eastern Mass that address the growing wealth gap and different challenges of our times. So a bit of introductions for our speakers as we get started. So Deborah Fries is an author, entrepreneur, and social activist. Her award-winning book, co-authored with Meg Wheatley, Walk Out, Walk On, A Learning Journey into Communities Daring to Live the Future Now, profiles pioneering leaders who walked out of organizations failing to contribute to the common good and walked on to build resilient communities. She co-founded the Boston Impact Initiative in 2013 to help address inequities in access to capital and opportunity. Deborah is also the founder of the Old Oak Dojo, an urban learning center where neighbors gather to rediscover how to create healthy and resilient communities. Thank you so much, Deborah. Welcome. We also have Henry Noel Jr., who describes himself as a passionate champion of rigorous investment analysis, coupled with purposeful attention to measurable social and environmental impact. Henry has over 20 years of experience evaluating investment opportunities, structuring securities, raising capital, and financing business growth. Henry is focused on the intersection of impact investing, economic justice, and building resilience in inner city communities from the ground up. Welcome, Henry. Thank you both for being here. I'm going to pass it off to you to take it forward. Thank you so much, Paige. And to all of our friends at Ujima, Nia, James, the rest of you guys have been awesome partners along the way. And thank you for going on this adventure with us. I just wanna to say tonight is an adventure. Um, we, you might get a little lost, especially cause there's this card deck and some of you have it, some of you don't have it. I'm gonna show you guys a digital deck and you're gonna try and use it even though you haven't used it before. So anticipate a little chaos. That's number one. Number two, Henry and I aren't speakers. We're like your poker night hosts. So this is, this is a game. We are playing a game. Um, and the third thing I wanna to say top level is this is a two part series. So tonight and next Wednesday night go together. So I know that's all about real estate this week but we're gonna actually start by just learning how to use the deck and we're gonna build our way up to real estate. And next Wednesday, we're gonna get hardcore into a real estate case study and it's gonna be really fun. Um, but it might feel a little real estate light um, tonight. So um, first I just wanna, um, you've heard about BII. We've been partners with Boston Ujima Project from inception. Um, but I have a couple other colleagues here along with Henry, which are Aliana Pinero, our impact director, and Sabrina Nunez Diaz, who's our impact investing associate. So you guys can like wave or throw a heart up. Um, we'll be hanging around. If you end up in a breakout room with them, they have all the answers, right? You guys? Okay. So um, also James and Paige, I don't know if you are able to support some breakout room setup, but we will be doing two rounds of breakout rooms. And just as a heads up, the first round will be people in pairs. And the second round, and um, uh, Aliad, if you put the link in, I will put the special Ujima access code because I created one today. Um, so first round is pairs. Second round is going to be groups of four or five. Okay. So who here, if you can show me, do you have your integrated capital card deck with you? I see a few. All right, the majority do not. So before I go any further, I'm gonna tell you all about what it, no, I think I'll tell you about what it is before I lose your attention to it. So um, the integrated capital card game is something that we created during COVID because we were running a um, national cohort of people who are learning how to create place-based integrated fat capital funds focused on closing the racial wealth divide. I'm gonna break that down. Um, so integrated capital, when we say integrated capital, there's two ways that we understand it. One way of understanding integrated capital is every financial tool in the toolbox. So you're probably familiar with like debt from bank loans, things like that, equity, like venture capital and grants. But between grants and debt and equity is a whole slew of capital tools 
like purchase order finance, convertible debt, royalty finance, guarantees. And what we're saying is when you have a chronic problem and getting equitable access to capital, we're going to have to utilize all of the arrows in the quiver of capital. So that's one thing we mean by integrated capital. And that's what this integrated capital card deck is teaching. Um, thank you, Eliana. Um, the second thing is integrated capital means not just financial capital. Financial capital, social capital, knowledge capital, that is the heart of Ujima, right? It's not just about the financial transaction, it's the whole set of relationships that we need to be in to support um, entrepreneurs and uh, to support healthy, stable, equitable real estate ownership and stewardship. Um, and so that's what the integrated capital card deck is trying to do. It's trying to take a really complex whole systems look at something in our place, in our community, and make that whole universe available to you in one in one place. Okay. So, yes, sorry. Um, so <laughs> why we created the game was we were going to work with our cohort. It was going to be in person. COVID hit, and my dog is going to hopefully calm down. Um, and we thought there's no way we can hang out on Zoom for hours and hours and hours without having some fun. So we created the integrated capital card deck in order to play to change the world instead of always working to change the world and to have something tangible in our hands to touch. So while there is a digital deck, which I'm about to show you, um, it's really a relief to have all of these suits to play with and to flip through. So we uh, suggest that you do that. Um, even though we do have the integrated capital deck. Let me show you the deck. Um, so I am gonna actually uh, show you also logging in for those of you who are doing it this way. You're gonna put your name in and your email. And that access code that um, Aliana put in the chat, hopefully. After you put the access code in, you're going to select that you're part of the group Boston Ujima Project, and then you can join the game. There's a little instruction uh, window, which you can get rid of. And what we're going to do is you're going to see there's these, these eight suits. Um, we're going to play a game with three of the suits. But while I have this, I'm just going to go through every suit with you so you can see it. So um, Henry's going to take you later through a storytelling game, um, but it's going to start with this suit, which is type of entity. So the type of entity, so if I click that lower right hand icon, I'm going to see, oh, what type of company and entity might I be investing in, right? It could be a startup. It could be a growth enterprise. It could be a cooperative. So I can look at that. Um, I have a type of capital that I might be investing. So I'm going to see, oh, wow, there's lines of credit, there's royalty finance, there's a, something called a safe, there's equity, there's term loans. There are over here transaction structures. So a capital type has a form in which it's delivered. And I know for a lot of you, this is like, whoa, I've never touched finance before. This is a lot of information. This is what I want to say is we're playing. Um, you're not going to get it wrong. You can't get this wrong. It's a game. So you're going to experiment and learn. So transaction structures are, okay, I might do equity, but maybe it comes in the form of a structured exit. I might do equity, maybe it comes in the form of self-liquidating equity, or I might do debt and it has a co-lending agreement. So again, happily, we're not gonna play with the transaction structure suit as much. Um, couple other suits, funding source. Who should I go to, to raise capital? So normally we think I gotta get capital from a bank. Sometimes we think I got to get capital from a foundation. Maybe I have to get capital from, maybe I'm lucky I could think I'm a growth business and I can get it from a venture capital fund. There's a lot of different funding sources to consider. So we have many more out there than we think we are restricted to. Um, again, we have uh, local stakeholders. So it's not just who's providing capital, but who out there cares about the success of our enterprise? Who has a stake in the success of that? So people like community organizations, faith-based institutions, worker services. So that's all of the stakeholders that care about us being successful. We have this one we're gonna play with today, impact criteria. So we don't just care about finance, we also care about how does this benefit our community, the planet or people? 
right? And so inside that deck, we're gonna say, oh, well, it really matters who owns the enterprise or is there worker voice in it? Is there democracy in it? Um, we have impact covenants. We're not gonna play with this today, but this is if I do decide to invest, might I wanna create restrictions to ensure that as this enterprise grows, it continues to be impactful. So I might decide to put some covenants, some agreements around the wages that they pay, living wage or the compensation ratio. Um, finally, we're definitely not playing with this today or the next time is financial management reports. If you're gonna run a fund, you actually care about duration and yield and liquidity, but let's not worry about that today. So when you play a game, just to show you how this works, we're gonna play a game that Henry's gonna introduce I'm gonna click. Um, I'm gonna click the suits that I want to work with first, right? So let's say I want type of entity, and I want type of capital, and I want impact criteria, and then I start my game. And again, when when Henry goes through the actual exercise, you're gonna look at the suit and you're gonna say, "Oh yeah, I want to tell a story about the time that I." Let me not do that one. The time that I invested in a startup and I put in a uh, equity investment in a startup. So I'm sliding it over to make my hand. And the impact criteria, I invested in this startup because it had really great ownership and it was good jobs and they thought a lot about their ecological footprint. And that's my hand. When I'm finished, I click show hand and I can see my hand and have a conversation with somebody. So normally I wouldn't do that full demo, but since I know the majority of you don't have the deck, I hope that you're successful in finding your way um, in, in using that. Obviously, if you have the card deck, you'll just set the three suits aside that we wanted to tell you about to start. So um, any <laughs> questions? practical before I hand it over to Henry to let you dive in to tell to tell stories. Any questions on anything I showed or how to use it? Kelsey, uh, Henry's going to tell you the suits when he gets into the storytelling exercise. Can we just have people throw up a quick um, thumbs up if they were either able to get into the digital deck or they have their cards? It looks like so far we have one person who might be having a problem. If we could just quickly see I see a couple of thumbs, I see three, four, five, six, thumbs up, seven, okay. Okay, it looks like we mostly have thumbs up. Um, so it looks like so far we have one person who's having trouble getting in. So I'll just try to troubleshoot with them privately. And I, and I do also wonder, Paige said try refreshing your browser. When we get into the breakouts, maybe we can also share screen. And uh... I would also suggest, Nia, if people are stuck, don't go to the breakout room and hang out with me in this space and we can okay. try and troubleshoot together. All right, excellent. Thank you, Deborah. Sure. So again, what we're doing here is um, we're gonna do some storytelling around just impact investing in anything. It could be an enterprise, it could be real estate related, but it's to get used to using the cards and we're building our way to cracking a real estate case together next week. Um, however, I know that there are some folks on this call who do a lot of real estate investing, Meredith, Nora, I don't know, you know, okay. So what I would love is for you to be thinking about a real estate case, because it'll. we might ask you, there's a preview of a cold call. You might get asked to do some storytelling so other people can see um, what it looks like. Nora, you don't have to, you don't have to. Mike Leba, you're another person. So anyway, just asking the real estate folks, Maggie, you know, if you have any of that experience, put that in your back pocket. We might be asking for volunteers later. So Henry, let me hand it over to you for our storytelling game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so again, what this is about is storytelling. We want you to see where you may fit into this huge universe, this ecosystem that we've been talking about. Um, where is it that I fit in? Do I fit in as um, someone who's seeking capital? Do I fit in as someone who is actually um, providing capital? 
and it helps to ground everyone in the audience as to you know how what role do we play in the various um, what role do we play in this whole ecosystem? So what we're going to do first is we're going to select our impact criteria cards or suits, sorry. Then we're going to also see, select our type of entity suits. And lastly, our types of capital suits. And we're going to use those three suits to basically tell a story that we've been in that we've been involved in. So again, some of you may have very complex stories where you used uh, you know, a lot of dif different features. And some of you is just a matter of, well, I've never done it from an entrepreneurship or funder standpoint, but I did make a donation and I made a donation, which counts as a grant to a nonprofit and they were focused on equitable opportunities and jobs. And so those are the, those are the uh, cards that you can pick in those different suits. So just as an example, we could go through one. Um, the first one I'll say is uh, types of entity. Um, I've invested in a startup. Actually, we recently looked at a company where we, it was a startup company and it was a not-for-profit entity. And the types of investment that we were looking at or the types of capital were um, debating between a term loan and equity, really looking at what was best for that entrepreneur and for that business at this time. And that company was very involved in looking at um, equi equitable ownership, equitable opportunity, and they were very, very engaged in the community. And so what we want you to do right now is we want to break you up into teams of two and in breakout rooms and we want you to go through and tell a story using these three suits of a transaction that you've been involved in. Once you um, have gone through that, then you could come back and we'll pick on um, different groups to tell us what their examples were, something that stood out, something that was very interesting, things of that nature. So if we can I mean, get- Let me jump in with one thing, just because I know a lot of you are like, wait a minute, I'm not a finance person. What are you talking <laughs> about? Yes. So I would guess that most of you, especially if you've been involved with Ujima, had some time or another, you have made a donation. There's a card called grant to a nonprofit. There's a card called nonprofit that does something of value in the world, like creates good jobs, creates a better environment. So you're part of this. So you can find yourself in the deck. So just wanted to say, you don't, don't worry about complex financial transactions. You belong in this deck too. Now, if we can get some assistance in figuring breaking group, breakout rooms. And again, we're going to be in groups of two and through the deck, find yourself, find a transaction that you've been involved in and share that with your partner in the deck and we'll come back and um, reconvene. And so you'll have six minutes total, three minutes for each partner to tell the story and maybe Paige, if you can ping them at three minutes to switch, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yep, perfect. I just had those set up and I'm gonna open those breakout rooms now. So folks should see a pop-up on their screen. And Louise, I'll add you to a room now. I didn't, didn't see you in the list. Oh, I think you might be in a room. Nope, oh, okay. I'll add you to a room, Louise. Okay. <laughs> okay, so great to have everyone back. Um, real excited to see, you know, what stood out in some of your breakout rooms. Um, you know, did anyone really have something that really connected with them and I just open it up to see if anyone would like to share. Let's not be shy. I can share. Please. And I, I, I preface this by saying, you know, I work for the co-op fund and we do lending. So it wasn't a big stretch for me to think of, of an entity where we had, where I, I'd been involved with sort of financing, but the, the one that occurred to me was um, actually not, it, we do have money in it, but it was the Dorchester Food Co-op, which has raised money 
from the community by selling shares, by selling non-voting shares. So Deborah, I have a new card for you to make, which is equity, but without, clearly equity without voting rights. I mean, without, right, without controlling rights. So, um, so they, they, they've been, and they're, this is ongoing, soliciting contributions or mm -hmm. uh, that are shares, so sort of patient investments from the community. And um, so they don't have access in many ways to traditional capital. They're not operating yet. They have no revenue. They can't really be repaying debt. And then I looked at the impact criteria and I have like all these cards that they hit on impact, a lot of them around awesome. equitable jobs and hiring from the community and, and stuff like that. But it was really exciting to see that. Yeah, it's awesome, it's awesome. Uh, uh, and that's uh, uh, one of the great features is really using the cards to see how many different, um, in your case, impacts you're touching and with some of the other cards, how many different stakeholders are involved and what the ecosystem really looks like. That's what, you know, this is geared to try to have people start thinking about. Um, did anyone in the, any of the groups have any real estate focused um, conversations? No? Okay, well, that, that was meant to be a transition into our <laughs> next storytelling. And, and, and here, what we wanna do is, um, because this is a real estate workshop, we really want to start thinking from that perspective, you know, has anyone in the group been involved, you know, commercial in a commercial or multifamily type of transaction? Um, and we'd love to hear their stories using the cards. And specifically, we could use the funding source suit and the type of capital transaction structure suit. So any volunteers? Again, the type of capital transaction suit? Oh, sorry, funding yeah. source. And type of capital suit. I had an example. Um, hi, Please. everyone. Uh, my name is Suad. Um, what we talked about, I um, used to work in affordable housing development, and um, we had uh, we issue, we were building a community land trust using a grant from the Federal Home Loan Bank. Um, and that was a way that we could help fund finance construction or subsidize construction of the uh, affordable multi, um, six homes that we had used for home ownership. Awesome. Awesome. That, that, that's a great example. Um, so this deck, uh, there are some cards that could be added as far as specifically around real estate, but that was an awesome example of, you know, what, what it is that is possible using different pieces here. Um, at, th at this point, uh, we want to talk about a little bit of foreshadowing for next week. Uh, Deborah? Whoa, 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 we are jumping way ahead. We have another few minutes. So we, we are going to spend some time on the real estate thing. We've huh. just, because that's that last minute. That's all we need for that. <laughs> so, so I would love to actually, let's go back to this real estate storytelling, because what we want to do yeah. is prepare you for working a case next week. And so, um, so I thank you for your example. I'd love to do that again, but actually in a little bit of a live gameplay. So now one of the people I could call call, which is Meredith, doesn't have any access to the deck at all. Is that right, Meredith? Or are you finding uh, I in? don't have access. I'm, I'm happy if you can feed me the language of the card. I'm happy to do it, but I don't. Have okay. That. So Meredith, we're going to do this live. I would like you to think okay. of a real estate transaction that you've been involved with. Could you tell us about it? What's an example? Sure. Um, so I'll use an example right now. Um, I am figuring out my funding to purchase a six family building and to do the financing i know that i have to come up with about 2.4 million dollars um a little but that includes both the acquisition as well as all of the construction and everything else to do the rehab um and so i can get 
some of that money through a soft loan from the city through the acquisition opportunity program. So that's a okay. All right. Yeah. So your first funding source is government. So I'm going to pull, I'm gonna, we're going to break this down. We're going to break this down as you go. So I'm going to pull the government card and we'll, and then we'll look at the type of capital you're going to do. So in all of these funding sources, I have a card called government. That's like a really good source of capital. So you're going to go to government and okay. what are you going to try and get from government? I'm trying to get, um, trying to get about, uh, let's see, what is it? About 1.2 million. Of, of what what kind of capital do you think you want to get? From oh, government? sorry, a soft loan. So it's a loan, but it's forgivable after a certain period of years. Okay. If so I decide to getting... sell, like if I decided to sell, I'd have to pay them back. But as long as I keep it in place, then I don't have to pay it back. So is it structured technically as a term loan? And then, and then it's potentially forgivable? That's right. Okay. So I'm going to pull the term loan card out. What we don't have in the deck is a forgivable loan, which we ought to have in the transaction structure. Aliana, please make a note. Um, so transaction structure would be a forgivable loan. Um, let's keep going. Who else are you gonna go to for capital? Well, I happen to have a really generous donor who's actually gonna go put money in because I, I still have, well, let me come back to her. Actually, I also need to get a loan. And I have to figure out how big the loan is. And I'm going for an acquisition loan from a friendly lender who likes community land trusts. And, um, but I have to know how much I can cover the debt because I have to pay for the debt. So it depends on, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but it depends yeah, on how much I can. So, so you yeah. want another loan from, an, this is an individual. Take no, that. this one is from a bank, just a bank. An, okay. Bank. So another funding source is going to be a bank and you're going to yeah. get another term loan or a mortgage. Yeah. Uh, a more, this is a term loan that will be ultimately replaced by a mortgage, a 30 okay. year mortgage. Okay. So we're going to add the mortgage card to that one. Cause that's in your capital stack, even if it's not immediate. Um, right. And that is actually over in my transaction structure deck, right? So we've got the capital type and then the form in which it's delivered. So I'm going to pull a mortgage card out. Okay. Got a mortgage. There we go. Um, who else are you going to get capital from? So I still have a gap because the mortgage, the, the loan can only go so far. So I still need to fill it in. Um, and so I can, I'm, I can go to the private sector and I find someone who's really generous and is willing to to put some money into this deal so when you say that are you talking about corporate philanthropy are you talking about a high net worth individual are you yes. talking about an okay the high net worth individual yes and you want to get a grant or a loan from them or it's a charitable gift so it's a grant you want to get a grant. Okay. And they might use, they might use a family office or a DAF or something, a donor advised fund. Yes. All right. Correct. So we're going to get an, a, a, a high net worth individual, which is called an accredited investor maybe. And we're going to go get it out of either their family office where they park a lot of their philanthropy or their donor advised fund, which is another place that they park their philanthropy. Correct. And then you're going to get a grant. Now, what about a guarantee? Um, I am using my reserve fund as collateral, but I don't have a guarantee, but that's a good idea. But if there's one more thing, there is one more Wait, layer. Pause, pause, pause. This is the point of the deck, by the way. Okay. Meredith's like, oh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of a guarantee. I'm okay. looking, I'm like, well, what about, you know, so, oh, I had, oh, maybe I should be thinking about a guarantee. Who would I, who would I go get a guarantee from? Which of these funding sources might offer me a guarantee? And maybe a quick description of what a guarantee is. Oh yeah, Meredith, That's what's a guarantee? Someone who's um, able to put up, the, take on the risk. So if there's any kind of default, they will cover. That, that, someone can do a better job of describing it than me. Henry? Yep, that, that was exactly it. Basically the guarantee is going to come in and um, support the risk of the, of 
the loan that you're making and basically take the first loss if there are any. So who and are we going Nora, to? Just really quickly, Nora put in the chat, uh, it's kind of like co-signing co a loan or a lease. Great, thank and you. There's, there is one more layer, should I? Do you want wait, that wait, wait, now? Wait, wait, we'll get there. We'll get there. I just we're okay. gonna because we're workshopping because okay. this is what you guys are gonna do next week. Where okay. should Meredith go to get a guarantee? What funding sources should she be going to to get a guarantee? Anyone? I looked at my. Who she have a relationship back. with? Okay, a foundation so maybe. A foundation, yeah, a foundation would be a good place to consider getting, it could be a private foundation, possibly a community foundation. Those might be good places to get a guarantee. All right, Meredith, what was your last piece? Uh, an allied investor for or investors for subordinate loans at a lower interest rate, like at a okay. zero to 2%. Okay, Henry, what's a subordinate loan? Subordinate loan is where we're going to come in and not be the first in line, but be a junior position to the, the person who's taking the, um, who's lending the money uh, initially. And in that junior position, if there's an event of default or if there's a liquidation event, they would get paid only after the person in the priority position um, is made full, is, is received their interest. So payment. someone someone who's saying, we're I'm to willing to be the last person I'm or willing I'm willing to be, to be behind yeah. somebody else. So you get your money out, Henry, before I get my money out as the subordinate person. Absolutely. It's not in the deck. Pollyanna, we should add it to the deck. Um, so, so where would we go for getting a, a, a subordinate, which would be a transaction structure card? Who are we going to go get that from, Meredith? What, 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 who are you thinking about? Friends. People Friends. who, yeah, people who know the, the allies who are mission aligned with the land trust and they, you know, it's a place We're also, I should say for this, it's interest only. So it's a note and the term is like a five-year term. So these are people who said, I can get, I can let you use my money for five years and I'll get a 2% interest payment on it once a year. And then at five years, Maybe I'll revolve it back in, or maybe yeah. I'll, I'll get paid to take it out. You know who's a great candidate for that, that you know? Oh, I don't Eugenia. know. Uh, the Boston Udema Project, a charitable loan fund. That would be a great candidate for that junior position in real estate. Okay, so we, we obviously haven't done this completely, but Meredith has... Um, all of this to pursue in her way of going out there to get that two point whatever million raised and, and maybe some more that she hasn't thought about. Um, and if she looked through the transaction structure deck and the types of capital and the funding source and the local stakeholders, she would see more possibilities. Like we didn't talk about crowdfunding, a direct public offering. Would there be any reason that community would want to step into this? Should there be a tranche of community ownership? What and are the Deborah, many other? Yeah, Henry. There were all of those interesting things are coming up in the chat. So people are having their hat, their, their you know thinking hats on. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly that's what we're up to. That's what we're trying to play with. Um, no right answers. It's a way to get unstuck. It's a way to open up creativity, etc. And yes, Nia, of course, you should already be in conversation with Meredith on this. So. Now I'm gonna give you the preview. Um, we are going to send you all, and Paige, you and I can work out the best way to get this to people. Um, we are sending you a case study. Um, and this is what it's gonna look like. So you are gonna see a little bit of a story about an entrepreneur who we very much want to help. It fits, fits the alignment of what Ujima cares about. Um, who's about to lose her building. And it's gonna tell you who owns it, her demographics, the governance, the jobs, et cetera. And she has the possibility of purchasing a building um, that other people are in as well. So you're gonna get that just little two page overview. You're also gonna get um, 
a little spreadsheet. It's not too intimidating. Henry's done a really beautiful job of giving you a little explanation in the column on the right where it says notes, a little interpretation to help you out. Um, you do not have to crack the case and understand all the financials to contribute to the conversation. Um, it's gonna be a chance to sort of do just what you just watched me do with Meredith, which is like, tell me about the situation. We've written that up for you. A little bit about the building and acquiring it. You know, one of the things we didn't talk about is like, if it's an impactful enterprise, if what Meredith is doing is impactful, if what the center entrepreneur is doing is impactful, maybe there are more sources of capital, especially philanthropic or those subordinate types of capital because they wanna have an impact in the world as opposed to pure financial reasons for making the investment. So we're gonna send that out to you um, before the next session, hopefully sometime, maybe tomorrow. Um, and we do wanna encourage you to get your hands on the card deck because it is a way easier as you saw me to flip through all of this stuff than it is to actually go through the digital deck simultaneously and live. So any questions or comments about that? Um, either reflections on what you just experienced or confusions or delight, whatever you wanna share because we have lots to, to hear from you. I have delight and I have a very logistical question, which is, um, is there a way to go pick up the cards somewhere in Boston rather than like having them delivered and paying for shipping and all of that exciting stuff? Yeah, they're here at the Old Oak Dojo. So if oh, anybody wants that's to come convenient. make a plane, um, I'm happy to uh, provide you your deck here. Awesome. So I guess I'll email you, Deb. Thank you. And I couldn't see who was asking, because I see a question in the chat. How do we get our hands on the deck? Was that Sarah who, who just asked that question? Or is that someone else who asked in the yep, chat? That was me, Sarah. That was you. Okay, great. And um, uh, so, put that link in. Yeah. And I think what we'll do, if if everyone here registered through the Eventbrite, tomorrow, tomorrow's Veterans Day. So what we can do is send out a thank you to everyone who registered via Eventbrite uh, on Friday. And in that thank you, include the link uh, to order the ticket, to order the deck, which we, we highly encourage for, not only for next Wednesday, but also just to have in general, um, as well as the case study if we, if we have the case study in hand by that time. Right. So if you haven't registered in the, through the Eventbrite, um, I think I'm gonna ask you, uh, to maybe just shoot us an email at info at ujimaboston.com so that we can make sure both links get to you. Great. Nia, yeah, that sounds good. We'll send you the case. Um, really appreciate you all playing along with us. Uh, not only we, we debuted real estate and we also debuted the digital deck on mass. We haven't done that before. So um, thank you for, and, and for revealing some of the bugs in it that we will sort of make sure we try to get taken care of by next week. And uh, thanks for playing with us. Thanks so much, Deborah and Henry. That was awesome. We so appreciate it. Um, Great, so we're gonna move into our member teams now. You both are welcome to stick around for those if you'd like. In the meantime, we're gonna say a non-awkward